Bernini was by is by anyone's reckoning reckoning one of the most uh, one of the greatest Italian artists of of the centuries. He is in uh, more specifically he's in the last in that creative line of gene universal geniuses produced by Italy during its glorious epoch of the Renaissance and the Baroque. Worthy successor as everyone uh, by again by anyone's reckoning of Raphael, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. And this long series of great artists ends with Bernini at the end of the 17th century. When I began my research and study, uh, in research into Baroque Rome, 17th century, uh, which was one of the great uh, apexes of uh, Roman history, I wasn't specifically interested in Bernini, but I kept coming across him so many times in so many different contexts that I said to myself, if I'm going to understand 17th century Rome, Baroque Rome, one of the most glorious civilizations of uh, Italian history and Western European history, I simply have to know Bernini. So I decided to tackle him. This book has two, uh, the book has two facets, and therefore two, there are two aspects to its importance. The biography that we're talking about is um, the, the, the first full-length narrative about John Lorenzo Bernini's life written by his son. So it's the most su substantial primary source into the life and work of Bernini directly from the family. No, there was no other, so, uh, other work directly from the family except for a small two-page uh, account of his life. The other aspect of the importance is my edition. This is my uh, edition of Domenico Bernini's Life of John Lorenzo Bernini is the very first translation of this work, first published in 1723, the first translation into any language outside the Italian. And in fact, it's the first republication of the text since the 1723. The text, there have been facsimile editions. The original Italian has been fac, uh, issued in facsimile uh, uh, form, but no one ever re-edited, republished it, republished it. And re in translating the text, I also compare and contrast everything that Domenico says with what we know about the same issues from the other extant primary sources. So the book consists of a long introduction of 80 pages, the translation itself, which is about 160 pa uh, 160 pages, and 900 footnotes, plus two small append uh, appendixes giving trans annotated translations of two very impo other important early uh, primary sources, biographical sources. So it's a whopper of a book that cost me more than 10 years of my life. The library, this book could not be, could not have been done without the, uh, the library. The library, especially Baptist Art History Library at Boston College, was the number one source of materials, information for everything that went into the book. I, it, again, I could not have written this book without the library the Art History Library at BAPS, and of course, O'Neill and other more specialized library, uh, libraries. I looked at uh, the sources of my, my scholarship were Bernini's works of art. They tell a story of his life, and they're described in the biography. Uh, the unpublished material in archives, mostly in Italy, but also in Paris and uh, small, other smaller cities. And then thirdly, the third locus of material was the art history, BAPS Art History Library and other libraries. I think also I could not have written the book without the interlibrary loan at O'Neill Library. I must have the record for the most, uh, the largest number of requests <laughs> ever from one single faculty member. This book is not only about art history or Roman history, religious history. It's about everything. The author, Domenico Bernini, was very, um, well, he was an interdisciplinary kind of um, writer, meaning that in his work he understood that he had to contextualize his father's work and life into the larger picture of 17th century Baroque papal Rome. So I had to uh, go into fields of uh, uh, topics of religion, theology, politics, ecclesiastical history, even geology, because 
on a couple of occasions, uh, Domenico boasts of the huge size of the blocks of marble that his, his father uh, used to sculpt a couple of his um, works of art, most specifically the Constantine, the statue of Constantine in, the, in St. Peter's. And what he says has always been repeated in terms of the weight of the, the block of marble uh, without any question by scholars. Instead, I said to myself, hmm, that marble is Carrara marble. I bet if I ask a, ge a geologist friend of mine if, uh, for the density of Carrara marble, I can find out exactly how much that block of marble weighed. So I did. And that's one of the 900 footnotes. And for the first time, this information is available to uh, Bernini scholars. This was one of the greatest questions I had at the beginning of my research into the life of John Lorenzo Bernini. Why was this book, the, the full-length biography written by his son Domenico, uh, never translated, never republished in all the years that it was first published in 1723? By the way, it was published in 1723, but it was written while his father was still alive. Uh, Bernini died in 1680. Uh, this public, uh, there are, there's plenty of document, documentation to uh, suggest that it, he, Domenico was working on it as early as 1678, a couple of years before Bernini died. So why was this neglected? I think the question, the, answers, uh, the answer is threefold. One. Um, it was written very early, but published late, and it was o therefore it was overshadowed by a, a, a full-length biography uh, published by the more famous art historian uh, Filippo Baldinucci, a Florentine who went on to write other uh, artist biographies. So people defer to that uh, biography as the fir very first and therefore closest to the source. Secondly, because uh, this biography by Ber Domenico comes from the family itself, people dis tended to dismiss it as a work of mere hagiography, ap uh, 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 apology, and therefore of less interest. Yes, it is a work of hagiography and apology, but does it, that, that, that does not mean that it's not uh, important for our, our understanding of Bernini and of the myth of Bernini that this book puts in, uh, mess, uh, in, 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 in that, circula that it circulates. Third answer to the, uh, to the question, the mystery of why the delay in in translation, the Ita original Italian text is the m one of the most difficult forms of Italian I've ever had to uh, deal with. It's Baroque uh, Italian, late 17th century Baroque, complex, rhetorically pompous, uh, pompous. Uh, everything that his father tried to do in terms of ornamentation and complexity and, uh, and multiplicity of forms, the son tried to do in the sheer language. So people run away screaming from this kind of uh, language. Where uh, angels fear to tr tread, fools rush in, and I rushed in. When I started this project, I did uh, remember saying to myself, I wonder how I'm going to feel about Bernini at the end of the project. Will my opinion of him change uh, greatly? Will I end up hating him or fall uh, completely in love with him? I knew that as a scholar, I could not fall in love with my subject because that would compromise the objectivity of my scholarship. So I have not fallen in love with Bernini, but I do feel closer to him, even though, and this is a big change, I realize he was not always a lovable person. He was shrewd, he was ambitious, he was paranoid, he could trample on other people's sensitivities. but. Uh, he really was the genius that they say he was and his, son's, uh, his son praises him for. He really was. It simply is extraordinary that one man could do so many works of art and could have this un, un uh, uh, un untiring fountain of creativity in, all f in so many different forms, statues, buildings, uh, paintings, uh, uh, works of theater, etc. When sitting down to plan this biography of uh, the translation part as opposed to the documentation part, the big decision I had to make was, was I going to choose to, how, how faithful was I going to be to the original? Not to the meaning, because the translation is utterly faithful to the meaning of the original, but to the flavor, to the complexity, to the ornateness. This, again, this is an ornate, complex 
Baroque text with uh, long sentences that go on for 18 different lines, uh, incredibly uh, complicated syntax. Um, was I going to? Pr how much of that was I going to preserve in order to give the reader an experience of the original? I shortly after begin uh, uh, shortly after beginning the text, the translation. I decided no. It's more important that the text be clear, legible, and intelligible, and hopefully a pleasurable reading for the modern reader. And that's what I, I think I have succeeded in doing. It's clear, intelligible. Yes, every so often I'll throw in a little rhetorical flourish, an, um, an old-fashioned way of saying something in English to give some uh, uh, flavor of the original. But if you want that original flavor and complexity, you're simply going to have to return to the, the Italian text of, of um, the uh, late 17th century. One of the pleasures of doing this translation, meaning engaging a text word for word, line for line, one of the pleasures was uh, discovering things that other scholars who had read the text more quickly never, point, uh, never noticed, never pointed out. Um, certain manipulations of language to nuance the presentation of the material um, to enhance the, the, uh, the magnificence of the father. I, that I sort of expected, but what was surprising was the subtlety and the cleverness in which this was done. The other thing was that every so often there would be a fact that I had never read in uh, summaries of this biography. For instance, Bernini uh, produced a play in which he, he reproduced the f uh, a fire on stage. And uh, he wanted to scare the audience, but he, would, he had everything under control and it would be put out in time. Well, in, uh, when the fire started on, on stage, the audience went into panic and rushed out. And in, in a few words, Domenico says, and one man perished in the, in the, in the turmoil. No one has ever, in, in, in talking about Bernini's work in the theater, no one mentioned this fact. I mean, this is pretty reckless to start a fire on stage and think it's funny when people go into panic. So that was a surprise. Another surprise was the sheer manipulation of the facts and the truths. I n expected exaggeration. Uh, for instance, Domenico is very careful to tell us how much Bernini was paid for each of his works. I expected that the, the figures would be, would be exaggerated. They were, but by a lot, more than I expected. And then every so often, there are outright lies. Not too many, but they are there. And this is what my footnotes point out. So the work is about the glory of Bernini. And Domenico, his son, is going to do whatever he needs to by way of manipulation of the facts to, pre uh, to present the, great, the myth of the great Bernini. Well, it came out physically in February, so it's still too early for uh, reviews. But I can tell you that the volume has been received thus far extremely well. This on, I tell you this on the basis of uh, a couple of things. The press, as all presses do, um, solicited pre-publication endorsements from Bernini scholars for the Just Jacket and the website. They didn't ask me uh, for any suggestions. I didn't know whom they were asking. As it turns out, they asked some of the most important Bernini scholars today and all of them said yes and gave very glowing reviews. So that was extremely gratifying uh, uh, to, to read. Then, since the publication, I have received several emails from, again, important Bernini scholars um, congratulating me on the edition, the, the quality, the elegance, the clarity of the translation, and the exhaustiveness of the documentation. So it's been well received. My next project actually is about to be produced. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this book was followed by my own biography, comprehensive, full-length biography of Bernini. I, this is something I, will, I knew I was going to do since I began writing, preparing this Domenico edition. I didn't think I would do it immediately, but the University of Chicago Press uh, pushed me into doing it and made me an offer I could not refuse. So I did it, uh, I began writing it immediately upon finishing this Domenico edition. And that is, has just gone to press and will come out in October. After that, I have another project, which is a, 
a comprehensive interdisciplinary portrait of Baroque Rome. The 17th century, the Baroque period, is the most important century of the history of the city of Rome in pre uh, since the fall of Rome. There's Rome and its glory, ancient Rome and its glory, and then there's Baroque Rome, uh, 17th century Rome. Those are the high points. And I would, uh, what we need is a comprehensive portrait of life in Baroque Rome, and that will be my next project.